A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 13th of June 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Now look at this article from text and context page. It talks about a star called Betelgeuse. It is also known by the name Tiruvadurai or Ardra in Indian astronomy. It is a part of the Orion constellation and can be viewed easily from Earth. See, it is a red supergiant star and it is now showing signs of being in its last carbon burning stage. It means it is nearing its end. Researchers have determined this by studying the star's pulsations. The pulsation has matched the expected behavior of a star in this stage. The point here is that Betelgeuse is a massive star. This means that carbon burning stage will last only a few hundred years. After that, the star will collapse into a supernova. But there is some disagreement among scientists regarding the star's exact stage and when it will explode. However, it is widely accepted that Betelgeuse will eventually become a supernova. This is the crux of the news article given here. Now, in this context, let us quickly learn about the life cycle of a star. It is a very important topic, of course. See, in stage 1, stars start as big clouds of gas and dust. This happens in space called nebulae. It is like a huge cloud that floats in the sky. For example, we have the Helix Nebula. It is located 700 light years away from Earth. It is an example of a nebula where new stars are forming. The stage 2 is called the protostar stage. Here, the gas cloud from the previous stage collapses and a protostar forms at the center. It's like a baby star that is starting to grow. Remember it like this. When a baby bird hatches from an egg, it is similar to the birth of a protostar. Okay? Then stage 3. It is T Tauri star stage. Here, the protostar grows bigger and hotter, but it's not a full-fledged star yet. It's like a teenager who is still growing and developing. So, just like a teenager who goes through changes in their bodies, a T Tauri star is also changing and getting ready for the next stage, which is the main sequence stage. So, in the main sequence stage, that is stage 4, the protostar becomes a main sequence star. In this stage, hydrogen fuses into helium in its core. This produces heat and light. It's like a mature adult who is working and doing their job. Know that our sun is a main sequence star and it provides us with light and heat. Then the fifth stage is the red giant or red super giant. See, we saw that hydrogen fuses into helium in the previous stage, right? So after some times, it will run out of hydrogen. So when the hydrogen fuel runs out, the star expands and becomes a red giant. It's like an older person who grows bigger and needs more space. Then, the stage 6 is the stage of white dwarfs and supernovas. To tell you in simple words, depending on the star's mass, it can become a white dwarf or a supernova. See, here you should know about something called Chandrasekhar limit. It is nothing but 1.4 times the solar mass. See, the Chandrasekhar limit is like a weight limit for a white dwarf. It is the maximum mass that a white dwarf can have without collapsing under its own gravity. So, it's like a bag that can only hold a certain amount of weight before it becomes too heavy and breaks. If a white dwarf gains more mass and exceeds the Chandrasekhar limit, it undergoes a catastrophic event called a supernova. It's like an enormous explosion in space. Know that supernova are some of the most powerful and energetic event in the universe. Also, a low mass star like our sun becomes a white dwarf. Note that if it is of low mass, it is called as a red giant star. 
on the other hand a massive star that is red super gain star can explode in a supernova creating a powerful explosion that is what the news article is also talking about it is believed that betelgeuse will eventually become a supernova so what happens after the explosion see after the explosion what comes next again depends on its mass if the core mass is less than about 3 times the mass of our sun it becomes a neutron star let me put it like this assume sun's mass is m if the core mass of the sun after explosion is less than 3 times of m then it becomes a neutron star a neutron star is a very dense object made up of tightly packed neutrons it's like a super dense ball that spins incredibly fast if the core mass is greater than about 3 times the mass of our sun that is more than 3 into m the core collapses even further and forms a black hole a black hole is a region in space with extremely strong gravity it sucks in everything around it including light so if you are asking what will happen to the white dwarf see the white dwarf will remain below the chandrasekhar limit it cools down gradually over billions of years and eventually it will become a cold dark object known as black dwarf so that's all regarding the life cycle of a star it is a very important thing learn it once and revise it multiple times half of the science and tech is done away okay so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now take a look at this opinion article this article highlights two contrary data about kerala the state of kerala had been consistently in number 1 position at health index ranking of niti ayog but icmr indab study revealed that kerala is on top with the worst overall indicators for long term morbidity and mortality due to non communicable diseases in kerala 24 percentage people are affected by diabetes 18.1 percentage of people are affected by pre diabetes and hypertension prevails at the rate of 44 percentage the data by niti ayog and icmr about kerala are contradictory in nature and it also highlights the importance of addressing ncds which are silently affecting india at large scale So in this news article discussion let us learn about non communicable diseases its causes its prevalence in india preventive measures and initiatives of government in this regard before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here you can go through it first we'll look what are non communicable diseases see ncds refers to diseases which do not spread from one person to another but mostly caused by unhealthy behaviors they will be mostly chronic in nature and ncds occur due to a combination of genetic psychological environmental and behavioral factors they are also sometimes referred to as lifestyle diseases ncds are responsible for the death of about 41 million people every year which is about 74% of the total deaths globally one important thing to note here is four types of ncds that is cardiovascular diseases cancers diabetes and chronic respiratory diseases they alone account for 2/3 of the globally occurring deaths so now talking about the classification of non communicable diseases see ncds can be broadly categorized into three types they are lifestyle disorders mental health diseases and metabolic diseases lifestyle disorder includes diabetes hypertension heart diseases stroke and cancer mental health diseases include depression and trauma then metabolic issues like high blood pressure obesity and hyperglycemia that is high blood glucose level so now moving on to see the causes of non communicable diseases see firstly the unhealthy diet most of the packed foods contain high amount of salt and trans fat content high level of salt is associated with hypertension and high consumption of trans fat can lead to obesity when this is coupled with physical inactivity then the problem is very serious physical inactivity and 
sedentary lifestyle can lead to many lifestyle diseases obesity high level of cholesterol or some of the effects of physical inactivity next major cause is the use of tobacco see consumption of tobacco can cause hypertension and it can also affect the pulmonary system frequent intake of tobacco can lead to cancer as well apart from this alcohol consumption it is one of the major cause of lifestyle diseases excess consumption of alcohol can affect the liver then stress also can result in ncds it may lead to digestive problems headaches sleeplessness etc i think all the upsc aspirants know about it now we'll look at the prevention and cure for ncds see one of the effective way to control ncd is to focus on reducing the risk factors associated with these diseases some preventive steps for ncds include healthy diet this can prevent obesity and many other lifestyle diseases like diabetes and etc then regular exercise people with adequate physical workout tends to stay fit and does not put excess weight apart from this one of the best preventive measure is that avoiding the use of tobacco alcohol and drugs so these are all the preventive and cure of ncds next we'll look into the prevalence of ncds in india see ncds mostly affect lower and middle income countries india is also worsely affected by ncds in many aspects as per icmr's india health of nations state report the proportion of deaths due to ncds was 37.9 percentage in 1990 but it went to 61.8 percentage in 2016 the major cause of ncd death or coronary heart disease stroke and hypertension they alone account for up to 45 percentage chronic respiratory diseases account for 22 percentage and cancer account for 12 percentage and diabetes account for 3 percentage of the ncd deaths in india one more fact to worry about is that a 30 year old individual has a one fourth chance of dying from any four of the major ncds before the age of 70 years hope now you can understand how dangerous it is so now let us look into the government initiatives to deal with ncds see firstly national program for prevention and control of cancer diabetes cardiovascular diseases and stroke see it was launched in 2010 as part of national health mission for the effective treatment of ncds then preventive aspects of ncd is strengthened under primary health care through ayushman bharat wellness center scheme then india became the first country to adopt the national action plan for ncds as a response to world health organization's global action plan for prevention and control of ncds 2013 to 2020 apart from this 2023 is declared as the international year of millets by food and agriculture organization then side by side we also encouraging yoga which is also a very good initiative i guess so that's all regarding this news article with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article according to the article the union government yesterday released third installment of tax devolution to state governments which is amounting to 1 lakh 18280 crore rupees this amount is against the normal monthly devolution of 59140 crores the advance will help to boost capital spending and financing of welfare related expenditure in the states of india so this is what is mentioned in the news article in this context let us quickly learn about the tax devolution see as we all know india is a quasi federal country although we have a federal central state structure the center holds more power than the states if you look at the economic sphere here also center holds more power this is because most of the taxes are collected by the center and the states are dependent on the center for a large chunk of their financial resources now here comes the term tax devolution see the tax devolution is one of the way through which states receive money from the central government the money received as part of the tax devolution is basically the state's share of taxes from the gross tax revenue the percentage of tax that is to be devolved will vary state to state based on certain criteria 
the devolution of taxes is usually done through monthly installments note that the devolution of taxes is not the only way through which states receive resources from the center apart from tax devolution the states also receive monetary support through various schemes related transfers grants from the finance commission and so on now here comes the question who decides upon the criteria and percentage of tax devolution see it is none other than the finance commission the recent 15th finance commission has allotted 41 percentage of tax revenue to the states from the divisible tax pool for 2021 to 22 to 2025 to 26 in other words states will receive 41 percentage of the gross tax revenue which is collected by the center this is the vertical tax devolution that is the total money goes to the state from the center there is also horizontal devolution the horizontal devolution is nothing but the money devolved to each state see the devolution is not uniform to all the states it is decided based on certain criteria now we'll look at the criteria for tax devolution see the 15th finance commission used various criteria to determine each state's share in central taxes and the weight assigned to each criteria here you can find six criteria and the weights assigned to them the six criteria include population based on 2011 census then area forest cover and ecology income distance tax and fiscal efforts and demographic performance note that tax and fiscal effort and demographic performance are the two new criteria added in the 15th finance commission also note that till 14th finance commission the population based on the 1971 census was also included as one of the criteria for tax devolution but in 15th finance commission it was excluded the weightage for each criteria is provided here in the table you can just go through it that is all about tax devolution with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article it reports that the fishermen of Periya Nilankare village in Chennai have spotted a lone whale shark off the coast for 2 days over the last weekend. See usually whale sharks are found much further into the sea but now the whale shark was found around 50 to 100 meters from the shore. So this is about the news article. In this context let us quickly go through whale shark from an exam perspective. See the whale shark is the biggest fish in the world despite their name the whale shark are not whales and they are actually fish the whale sharks got their name because of their shape like sharks note that the scientific name of whale shark is rhinchodon typus now talking about the characteristics see the whale sharks can grow up to 60 feet long but most of them reach about 40 feet in length and they weigh about 15 tons the whale shark looks like the size of a large school bus note that the largest known whale shark was measured at 62 feet in 2001 with an estimated weight of over 60 tons now as we saw earlier the whale sharks have the shape of a shark but their mouths are present in the front of their flat heads rather than underneath as seen in many sharks whale sharks are dark gray in color on top and with a light color underneath they have a series of light spots or strips covering the dark parts of their bodies this helps to camouflage them as they swim the white whales tend to be non aggressive they often allow the divers to gently interact with them at times the whale sharks even allow the divers to grab their dorsal fins and they tow them through the water now talking about the diet of whale sharks the whale sharks are usually filter feeders and they survive on a diet that mainly consists of plankton they do not hunt down large prey instead they feed on other small prey like anchovies krill jellyfish crab and squid The whale sharks are said to be a passive feeder. It generally swims with its mouth open, so it can suck in any available food. Once it has a mouthful of food, the shark will close its mouth and remove the water through its gills. 
so the prey gets trapped in the bile and filters of the whale sharks it can then swallow the food and again open its mouth to gather more prey now talking about its habitat and distribution see whale sharks are found all around the world they are found in warm tropical and temperate seas but note that they are not seen in the mediterranean sea the whale sharks prefer water with a temperature range of 21 to 30 degrees celsius but sometimes they have been found in water as cold as 3 degree celsius The whale sharks are typically found between 30 degree north and latitude 35 degree south. They are largely found off the coast of countries like Belize, Mexico, Ecuador, Philippines, Australia and South Africa. So now coming to the threats faced by them. See the whale sharks are highly valued on international markets for their meat, fin and oil. so they are exploited illegally by humans apart from this unregulated fishing habitat loss climate change and accidental capture in fishing gear or some other threats faced by the whale sharks now finally let us see about the conservation status see the whale sharks have been listed as endangered under the iucn red list since 2016 apart from this the whale shark is listed in appendix 2 of the sites It is even included in the schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972. That's all regarding this news article. So with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at the small article from text and context page. It says that rupees 4500 crore funds under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram in short called as PMJVK scheme are lying unused with the states. This is the news article given here. So in this discussion we will learn about Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram or PM JVK scheme. Firstly know that this PM JVK is not a new scheme. In 2018 itself the erstwhile multi-sectoral development program was restructured and it was named as Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram. So PM JVK is the restructured scheme of the multi sectoral development program note that the revised PM JVK has been approved by the central government for the continuation over the 15th finance commission cycle that is the scheme is going to be in force during financial year 2021 to 22 to 25 to 26 now talking about the objectives of the scheme See PM JVK is an area development program and it is a centrally sponsored scheme. Under this scheme, community infrastructure and basic amenities are being created in the identified areas. Basically, PM JVK aims to provide better socio-economic infrastructure facilities to the minority communities. The main focus is given to the fields of education, health and skill development. This is because of the fact that development in these fields will lessen the gap of backwardness parameters between the national average and the minority communities. So providing better socio-economic infrastructure facilities to the minority communities is the ultimate aim of PMJVK scheme. Now coming to the funding pattern, see the PMJVK scheme is being implemented and managed by the respective state governments or union territory administrations as i said earlier pm jvk is a centrally sponsored scheme so the projects under the scheme are implemented on a fund sharing arrangement between the center and the state governments or union territory administration here you can see the funding pattern now talking about the projects under pm jvk see education health skill development and women oriented projects are the priority sectors under pm jvk the type of works undertaken under pm jvk include construction of schools hostels computer labs science laboratories in schools drinking water facilities toilets in schools hospitals industrial training institutes then working women hostels sports facilities public or community toilets and etc Note that the proposal under PM JVK are recommended by the state level committee headed by the chief secretary of the respective state or union territories. Then the proposals recommended by the state level committees are considered and approved by the empowered committee after due consultation with the concerned central ministers. 
So that is all about Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram. So these learnt points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. This front page article tries to explain about the trend in India's retail inflation. So in this news article discussion, let us understand about inflation, consumer price index, and wholesale price index. So what is inflation? Inflation refers to increase in the price of goods and services, right? In other words, we can say inflation is the condition where the purchasing power of money decreases and the value of goods and services increases. So previously, if you have bought a pen for rupees five, and today the cost of the same pen is rupees ten, then it is called inflation. Okay, inflation rate expresses the rate at which the prices have been rising, and it is expressed in percentage. CPI and WPI, that is Consumer Price Index and Wholesale Price Index, are among few indices used to measure the inflation rate. So now we'll see about CPI and WPI. Firstly, we'll take the CPI. CPI refers to inflation at retail market, and the data about CPI based inflation is compiled by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. The value of CPI is calculated from the increase in price of basket of goods. Which includes food and beverages, clothing and footwear, housing and etc. The highest weightage among these goods in basket is given to food and beverages, which accounts for 45.86 percentage of the total weightage. While this is about CPI, now coming to WPI. WPI refers to the inflation at wholesale market, and the data about WPI based inflation is compiled by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. In short, called as DPIIT, the value of WPI is calculated from the increase in price of basket of goods, which includes primary articles, fuel and power, and manufactured products. The highest weightage among these goods in the basket is given to manufactured products, which accounts for 64.23 percentage of the total weightage. The base year for the calculation of both CPI and WPI is 2011 to 12, and they are released on monthly basis. One important point to note here is that the changes in prices of services like healthcare and banking transactions are taken into account while calculating CPI, and they will not be included in the calculation of WPI. Apart from this, the inflation rates for rural and urban markets are also calculated for the better policy analysis. Now, let us quickly go through some of the important key facts given in the article. See the retail inflation of India has fallen down to 4.25 percentage. The price of food articles are expected to fall around 2.91 percentage, but the consumer price index is rising 0.51 percentage, and the consumer food price index marginally increased to 0.7 percentage. When it comes to the urban rural comparison, the urban inflation stood at 4.27 percentage. Which is slightly higher than the urban inflation, which is at 4.17 percentage. But one interesting fact is that food inflation in urban areas stood at 2.43 percentage, but in rural areas, food inflation is around 3.2 percentage. Few economists also said that the trajectory of inflation in future will depend on the monsoon and El Nino phenomenon. So that's all regarding this news article. So these learnt points. Now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Now look at this first question. Two statements are given. Statement one: Betelgeuse, a massive star in the Orion constellation, will eventually become a supernova. Look at the statement two: A red super giant star explodes into a supernova. See in the discussion, we saw that a low mass star is called red giant. A massive star is called red supergiant. A red giant will become a white dwarf, but a red supergiant will explode into a supernova. So here, statement two explains statement one. So the correct answer for the question is option A. Both statement one and two are correct, and statement two is the correct explanation for statement one. Now look at the second question. This question is about PM J V K. Three statements are given, and you have to find which statement is correct here. Statement one: It is a central sector scheme which is fully funded by the central government. See, this statement is incorrect. It is a centrally sponsored scheme. The funds are shared between the center and the states or union territories. 
Now look at the statement 2. The scheme aims to provide better socio-economic infrastructure facilities to the minority communities. This statement is actually correct. Now look at the third statement. The scheme is being implemented by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. See this statement is actually incorrect. It is being implemented by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. So the correct answer for the question is option A, only one, because only one option is correct here. Now moving on, look at this question about whale sharks. Four statements are given. Statement 1, they are not found in the Mediterranean Sea. This statement is actually correct. Statement 2, they are categorized as endangered under the IUCN's red list of threatened species. Statement 3, they are filter feeders and mainly feed on plankton. And statement 4, they tend to be non-aggressive as it allows humans to gently interact with them. Here, the correct answer for the question is option D, all four, because all the four statements given here are actually correct. Now, the question displayed here is the quiz question for you today. Just go through the question, try to answer it in the comment section. Now, moving on, the question displayed here is the mains practice question for you today. Just go through the question, try to answer it in the comment section. With this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you for listening.